You know, I've got to tell you a story before we start. I uh, took a Peugeot 405 over to the continent and uh, I used that while I was working in Germany. And then I drove it to the Ukraine and I went through Prague. Uh, it was a very hot day and my cooling fan didn't work and I noticed my engine was uh, getting very hot. It went over 90 degrees uh, and I had to keep moving and when I got stuck in traffic that wasn't uh, actually too good. Stopped it, actually had to replace the fan. I found a second hand one but my engine oil stank like it was burnt. I then slipped into a Tesco's in Prague. I bought some oil and changed my oil in the car park. Filled up the container with old oil, left it by the bin, and then carried on to Poland. <laughs> Apologies for the uh, <laughs> the mess that I didn't make in the car park, but as needs may, they must, mustn't they? Anyway, let's carry on with the video. Ooh. Okay, guys, hello, welcome back, and I'm just going to have a little draw on this machine I've bought. I'm trying seriously to kick the weed. Okay, it's like being married for 40 years. You miss it when it's not there. And I mean seriously miss it. It's, it's, that's why it's an addiction, yeah? So hopefully this, yeah? Menthol. With nicotine in it, what I should be able to do is slowly wean myself off. And this is the aim. The less addictions you have, the better in life, yeah? So, right, oil changes. Now, um... Yeah, you may well already have uh, an interval when you are going to change the oil on your vehicle and you do it religiously. Maybe you don't. You do it when you've uh, just remembered to do it. But most people follow the uh, recommended manufacturer's guide of changing the oil at a certain mileage, yeah, which doesn't always work out. And I can explain why in this. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of graphics, so you're going to have to pay attention to what I'm saying here, okay? Now... This vehicle is 10,000 uh, kilometers or 6,000 something or another miles um, service interval for oil and filter change, okay? And it's recommended to use 10W40 semi-synthetic. However, I find that this vehicle, although I'm doing 400 miles a week or rather about that, I'm finding that I'm still having to change the oil earlier because it's an older engine and it tends to get a lot of soot, a lot of carbon into the oil. And I can tell that just through experience, through the, the smell of the oil. So I know where I'm at, okay? Um, but you may not know. So what I will do is explain this and this oil spy, which I have here, okay? This oil spy, which I bought years ago. Um, done some videos on it already, but I've still got it about, yeah? And it, what it is, basically, is a specialist blotting paper which you can put a drop of oil on and then as it spreads you can then uh, look at the indicator graph to see whether it is ready to change or not and it's pretty accurate actually I, I, I would agree with that the only other way to uh, test oils of course is send them off to a laboratory now when I worked in Germany for the American army servicing Abram tanks quite a serious amount of oil there so what we do is we'll take a file full of oil we'll send it to the labs they would then say yes that needs doing or no it doesn't need doing but when they things go to labs samples go to labs they look for all sorts of things they don't just look for carbon content they're looking for uh, coolant in the oil or, or particles of coolant or metals as well so they can actually tell you whether your shell bearings are wearing up simply because the metal will be in there at the tiniest percentage but this is what they analyze for but we don't do that basically we look at the the, the sheet yeah that needs doing boom 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 and then we change the oil on uh, uh, an interval yeah so um petrol engines it's easy to tell if you're going to play it the old way play it by ear if you like um Usually you don't want to let a petrol engine oil colour degrade past dark brown, do you? Yeah, that's a given because when it goes black, it's already knackered. And yes, we all know we see cars that people have neglected. They haven't changed their oils and the petrol engine oil is black, which is shameful, to be honest with you. Yeah, there's far too many particles in that to, to help with lubrication. 
Now, diesel engines is a different matter because they the oil goes black almost instantaneously. There's a lot of carbon content there. Uh, diesel engines, yes, obviously they can cope with it up to a certain point, okay? But now you have turbos on most diesel engines it's imperative that you have good lubrication and you change the oil to the job that the vehicle does rather than what the manufacturer would recommend to change the oil at okay so this is what i want to explain yeah so this car does 30 miles to work 30 miles back and then i do other jobs so as i say i do about 400 miles a week okay and i have a regular schedule which i change my oil at i do an oil and a filter and then i will do a filter on its own and then i will change oil and filter again but i half the service interval because i know that the engine's old therefore the oil is absorbing a lot more carbon into it than it would if it was a newer engine okay and the, the quality of oil I use isn't brilliant, okay? I actually use uh, mineral oil, which is it's, it's still expensive, but it's a cheaper side, okay? So it hasn't got all the detergents in it and what have you, okay? There's so much. There's only so much carbon you can have suspended in oil, right? The problem comes with engines that are doing small, uh, short trips, and they're not getting up to running temperature, and they're either pottering off to the shop like Grandma does, and then back again, and she'll park the car up. The car never gets warm or somebody who's driving in traffic quite often and the engine doesn't do much it idles quite often or they leave the vehicle idling or even if they happen to have a pto system on their vehicle and they're uh, using the engine static yeah so they won't be recording the mileage as the vehicle static what they're doing is actually uh, extending <laughs> They extend it. They're not extending the life of the oil. They're actually uh, shortening the the mileage interval that, that the oil should be changed at. Now I will explain about why they do this on trucks a little bit later in this video, but there is a big problem because uh, sludge can be formed from moisture that's formed in the crankcase of the engine that never gets forced out by heat. Okay, so when you're running an engine at running temperature and of course you have your breathers and you have a circulation what happens is the moisture gets forced out of everything with the with the heat and then it is forced out one way or another through the exhaust or whatever burnt in, <laughs> through the cylinders and out yeah okay so the engine is then moisture free if the moisture stays in there it turns into sludge it pulls the carbon down and sludges up in the oil a lot worse than it would be um if it was running properly okay so as i say engines that that idle for a long period of time or engines that, that don't actually get up to running temperature yeah so that's a problem and this is the sort of thing you have to assess when you have a vehicle what's it doing is it uh doing good trips and i mean really good trips where the engine uh running temperature is there and you're moving and you're keeping up with a good flow yeah or is it just not doing too much but standing around idling a lot of the time? Because that will, and you know this, carbon will build up on the valves as well. It's, it's quite a nasty thing at the end of the day. So um, this is where you need to evaluate whether you're going to change your oil earlier or not. Okay. Now, um, this oil spy that I've got here, okay, this I bought years ago. And basically what it is is an oil tester. So you have a special blotting paper, okay, which you drop some oil onto and then it spreads out and you can use this telltale uh, graph here, okay, more colored warning signs or whatever. Simple, very, very simple test. And that will tell you whether your oil has got a lot of carbon suspended in it or not and whether it should be changed or not. Easiest, simple way, okay. Now I did do an internet check and yes, you can still find Oil Spy, okay? And I'll leave a link down below if you're interested, but it's bloody expensive. And to be honest with you, you don't need it. What you need to uh, develop is a nose to smell when there is a uh, heavy carbon content within that oil. Now I'm experienced at doing it because I've done a lot of servicing and I've come across some vehicles that should have had an oil change a long time ago and I can smell it and think, whoa, okay, that, yeah, that needs a, that needs a changing and that's what I'll do. Even if it's just come in for repairs and I've noticed it, I will recommend to the customer that needs an oil change immediately, okay? Um, because carbon isn't very good for your engine in, in the long run, okay? Especially for your turbo, 
because diesel engines now with turbos they need the most efficient lubricant that they can uh, that's of <laughs> good viscosity going around the bearings this is where most of the heat is generated uh, in the engine and the oil is also used as a coolant not just a lubricant okay so this is a consideration because a lot of turbo failures are down to poor quality oil and once a turbo bearing is gone it collapses uh, the oils go past the seal it then goes into the intercooler and into the engine and there is a possibility of, of the engine going maverick which means revving to really high degrees and exploding yeah it happens it happens usually what happens and I've seen this I've seen this in workshops it will suck the oil up that isn't uh, that's laying about in an intercooler and that will use that as fuel to burn it off yeah you've seen the the uh, videos on YouTube of engines that have uh, revved themselves to destruction that is why yeah oil from the turbo direct route into the inlet and then away you go as <laughs> simple as so it's precautionary yeah, to have uh, good quality oils and change them when when you feel that the uh, oil needs changing rather than on a schedule yeah so with trucks they have a hundred thousand kilometer uh, service interval when the oil's changed this is the mx11 mx13 engines on a daf okay i can't quote for any other vehicle these are uh units for instance that i work on but if you have vehicles that have blown equipment on them or they have pto driven uh, equipment where the vehicle is stationary it's using the engine gearbox to run hydraulics to uh, use auxiliaries to maybe blow off uh, sugar off a tanker uh, dry powder or pump uh, liquid off a, a, a tank or something like that or even tipping um, you know with tippers what they do is they use the pto hydraulics um, tips the the trailer the load slides off the back yeah this is all stationary uh, work okay uh tippers that work in quarries as well they have a uh an earlier uh oil change interval because of the the work they do it's more extreme okay so they take that into consideration so they can take twenty thousand or forty thousand miles off that service interval yeah so instead of a hundred thousand kilometers that'll be 60 or 80 thousand kilometers when that oil will get changed <coughs> unless the customer specifies otherwise but this is one of those things that's advisory yeah so that's another thing is using vehicles in extremes yeah when oil gets overheated or it gets pushed too much it breaks down quicker loses its viscosity again and then it loses its lubricating quality and you will tell this it, it will smell very carbony as well it will smell burnt that's really what i'm trying to say diesel engine oil will smell burnt when it's worn out okay good indication that needs to be changed but you should do it a little bit before then okay so if you uh do your vehicle regularly you get you get to smell what the oil is like when it when it's at the right time to change yeah so if you're not going to get one of these then use your sense yeah okay so that's as simple as that that's just a consideration for for preppers because you need to be on the ball more than a car owner that okay if the car goes bang they're not going to go to work but if your car goes bang doesn't work or you have a serious mechanical failure um, you're in trouble aren't you so you have to be up with your servicing or progressively ahead of your servicing like i say i change my oil earlier so I, my engine oil always has good lubricating properties okay now if i wanted to i could put high grade oil in it but then i would still follow the same routine of uh, monitoring the oil checking it and then using my nose yeah so if say i've done three four thousand miles and i'm thinking okay coming up to popping a new filter in or should i change the oil i'll, I'll make a decision based on that okay because there's that time when you suddenly you have a shit hits the fan situation and you have to work a long time without doing any maintenance at all but you'll be ready for that at that point in time so you will not have to worry about it where uh, joe blogs who has uh, <laughs> an engine oil leak and you might have a coolant leak he's not sorted it out plus he hasn't had an oil change in uh, x amount of years he takes his vehicle out has to push it to a little bit more of an extreme and what happens 
throws a leg out of bed or a conrod out of the block or something like that and it does happen it does happen maintenance is a key to minimizing failure okay so oil changes is one of those would i recommend buying really expensive oils no no just use what the manufacturer uh, recommends to put in the vehicle because they've done the research they've put the time and the money in to um making it right and giving you a, a guideline to go by yeah if you've ever been a land rover owner you will know that there is a section in the book that will say uh what intervals there will be for extreme usages of vehicles and i have explained it in a video somewhere on my channel under Land Rover stuff, yeah. So if you're interested in that, you can always go and search for it, all right? But this is generally a um, a prepper thing to, to help you along the way, just so you've got that little bit more of an edge on other people who might not even consider things like this. And this is from a, an experienced mechanic, okay? I do things that I need to to make sure that I'm okay, and I'm sharing with you now uh, what I think is is something to just not overlook not overlook yeah so you keep up your servicing and you're pretty good and one of the things is with that engine that is underneath your bonnet if you haven't got that running you're fucked aren't you <laughs> so anyway so now for me i think i've uh, said enough now okay and i'll see you in the next video with some more stuff that might be of use to you okay see you later take it easy and have a good week all right Oh look, I let the smoke clear first, and this is an addendum, if you like, to this video, which I forgot to mention, uh, which is quite important. If you're looking for a diesel engine that can help you along the way, that is going to provide longer servicing intervals, okay, you can obviously use a newer vehicle that uses low sap oils, uh, synthetic oils, which run longer, but uh, vehicles like the DAF, truck or well, the Packard engine Cummins Packard engine um mx11 mx13s it's only for instance but these are big engines they're, they're in peterbilts as well as, as dafs okay um they use centrifugal oil filters which the idea behind that is the oil runs through the centrifugal oil filter and as it runs through it spins and it throws the carbon out okay and then the oil runs through so you actually get an extended life of the oil because it's taking the carbon out of the oil or trying to take the carbon out of the oil and it does work quite well guys that used to work on old scanners three series scanners that had a, a removable filter which you took the top off and believe me there would be a thick layer of carbon that you'd have to manually scrape off and clean in as a service interval and then put it back into the engine and it does make a difference to the life of the oil so that is just an afterthought which perhaps you come across a pd engine uh, like a td5 engine and it has something like that and you think nah, actually yeah that is a bonus because it will uh, extend the life of your oil yeah and of course also if you're running in extremes and maybe you're doing off-roading something like that and you have to rev the engine harder you produce more heat and of course if you're not moving fast you don't get as much cooling so uh like land rover again there are plenty of vehicles like it but you have a thermostatically controlled oil cooler which when the engine gets a little bit too hot or the oil gets a little bit too hot it then puts it through the radiator and gets it back down to running temperature which is what 80 86 to 90 degrees centigrade yeah and again this helps the life of the oil and it also helps uh, the turbo from not failing yeah there is always a purpose for things being put onto vehicles so it's worth paying attention to yeah this is what you need because you're a prepper and you want to make sure that you can go the furthest mile that you possibly can so yeah, there you go this is from trailer fitter to you all right it's just a little gift <laughs> not many people know this but you do now don't you <laughs>